Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. This is a follow-up video for Maritza's interview. Now, if you haven't watched that interview yet, I definitely recommend that you do that first before you dive in into this one. In that interview, we talk about all the tips that's going to help you to study and pass your FE exam. We talk about preparation, scheduling, the material to use. In this video, we're mainly going to discuss the material that you need to know and you need to focus on to study for or pass your FE exam. Also, this weekend, I am interviewing Tasher. Tasher is one of my students who enrolled in all of my classes. He studied the right material and he just found out this Wednesday that he passed his FE exam. Congratulations, Tasher. I am really proud of you and I'm really happy that my courses helped you pass your FE exam. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, because if you have any questions that you would like to ask Tasher, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to ask him during the interview. In this interview, Tasher is going to share with us his FE experience and what he did to pass his FE exam. If you want to pass your FE exam in 2020, I definitely recommend that you check out my courses that I have on my, on my website. It's helping so many students pass the FE exam. Also, the course that I just launched, the FE Bytes course, is a great course. It gives you this review of the FE exam and it really prepares you of what to expect on your FE exam. Now, let's dive in into the interview. Now, I want to go walk you through the topics uh, to focus on okay. and like you know for the exam and like what to know but I do recommend studying all the material equally and okay. all the topics uh, but these are just like the, the questions that come up a lot so I'm just gonna briefly go over them like math it's good to know the conic sections the equations integral derivative partial derivatives mm -hmm. uh, just the simple math the roots of equations definitely of uh, cross and dot product um, for probability and statistics, mean, mode, standard deviation, those are very common. Uh, confidence intervals, regression, and curve fitting, that's also, these are also common. Comput computational tools, I feel like it's straightforward. You're going to get either the Excel, or you might actually get both the Excel, and then you have the programming. Yes. So those are just going to have to practice that, really. Yeah. And, and then ethics. So ethics is interesting because, like, a lot of it is just, like, logical I guess you know you read the question and you're like yeah this is wrong you're not supposed to do this as an engineer all right yeah it, most of it is like that like it's hard to really study ethics I guess that's how it was my situation yeah. I used the Linder book to study for ethics but that was the other book I think the reference manual has all the standardized like ethics that they use so you can yeah. read through them it's in the reference manual yeah th that's true you guys yeah. can do that as well and you can search up the, the keywords as well. Exactly, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, now for engineering econ, I think this one is straightforward. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the, just know how to do the cash flow, really. Yeah. Cash flow diagram, uh, book value, capitalized cost, that also helps. And then we have statics. So for statics, uh, we have the resultant of forces, really important yes. to know. Trusses, you're going to get a lot of questions on trusses. Sure centroid of area, moment of inertia, and friction problems. So these are really important. For centroid and moment of inertia, they can be long and lengthy. And the best way to do this is just to practice as many problems as you can. Yeah. Uh, I, I do have a course on statics, and I do cover all of these things. And I, we do actually a lot of problems. So, okay. yeah. And then for dynamics, uh, rectilinear motion, projectile motion, momentum, energy, and then we have mechanics of material. This one is heavy. You can get conceptual questions. You don't know what, you, what you're going to get. Yeah. But you just need to know the concepts really well. Know the shear and your moment diagram. The stresses mm -hmm. and the strains. Those are really important. More circle. Uh, composite sections. Sometimes I, you know, that shows up. The composite sections. And there are not a lot of problems out there on the, in this uh, topic. Uh, column analysis. Elastic and plastic deformations, yes. and then yeah, for materials, this one is also tough because there's so much in materials. Like there's concrete, there's steel, there's masonry, there's so many testings. Yeah, that's true. So it can be tough to study this one, but the most like common ones are you get stress and strain again for steel mm -hmm. or for like ductile or brittle materials. Uh, you can sometimes get questions on concrete. On like mixing of the concrete or testing of concrete these are the ones that are usually common yeah 
and then uh, fluid mechanics, straightforward. Seriously, fluid mechanics. If you guys ever stuck, if you get stuck in the exam, yeah. use Bernoulli. <laughs> Bernoulli all the time. Yes. Most likely Bernoulli would yes. solve the problem, right? Yeah. So you have Bernoulli, you have Darcy, friction, the friction losses. Yes. Uh, Orphis, these are also common, but it's really simple. The equation is already on the reference menu. Yeah. Again, it's about getting that keyword, typing it in, and it takes you to the equation. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And then hydraulics, hydrology, same thing. You look, you can easily look up the equations and just plug in. So uh, we have runoff, Manning equation, open channel, flow, pumping systems, and aquifers. These are common on the okay. test. So I will, I will probably send you this later. Okay. So yeah, you don't yeah. have to, yeah. And then for structural analysis, literally everything that's on here. <laughs> you have to focus on, for, yeah. us, for sure. Like they always bring up these questions, like analysis of forces in beams and trusses. Yeah. Deflection of the truss, that one is common. You use the unit load method. Uh, the structural determinacy, like it, is this beam indeterminate or stable? Or stable, or, yes. Right? So expect those questions on the exam. And then the, you can also, you might get load paths problems uh, on, under structural analysis. And then we have structural design. This is really easy. Like for moments and steel, you're gonna get same thing. I mean, for concrete and steel, you're gonna be asked to calculate moments, shear, or compressive uh, strength. And you have to make sure that you know the difference between nominal design and factor mm -hmm. because those are slightly different, and it's yes. important to know what you're looking for, right? Yes. So, um, and then we have geotech. So for geotech, we have phase relations, effective stress, shear strength, uh, stability of retaining walls, sometimes mm -hmm. that shows up, uh, bearing capacity, consolidation and differential settlement, flow net, and then transportation, we have the horizontal vertical curve, I think every mm -hmm. reference book uh, or FE uh, resources covers that. Yes. Yeah. And then we have pavement design, traffic safety, and then traffic flow theory. Mm -hmm. So these are also common. BOD, environmental regulations. Sometimes you might get question on like conceptual question on environmental regulations. I remember I got like two or three questions on that. And then we have wastewater collection and treatment. So those are common as well. And then we have construction. So for construction, we talked about this earlier. Yes. They don't really go in depth. What you need to focus on, a little bit of concepts, which are usually easy to figure out. Mm -hmm. The second thing is the critical path, the flow to the scheduling. Right? Yes, the scheduling, the yeah. critical path, I yeah. think it's huge. Yeah, and then we have the operation and like a, like equipment production. And then lastly, we have surveying. So surveying, honestly, I, I remember getting a question in each of these. So I had a question on angles and distances, and that was easy. I yeah. just used log sign or call sign to figure it out. I had a question on area computations. They already have the equations for this on the reference manual. And then live leveling differential, that's also common on survey. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your studying and I will see you soon. À la prochaine. Oh yeah, everybody now.